Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tash. I am a breathwork coach and a holistic health coach and I help women get their period back, especially from hypothalamic amenorrhea. And that's exactly what I'm gonna dive into today is my experience with hypothalamic amenorrhea and how I got my period back. <laughs> So I didn't have my period for nearly two years after stopping the pill. I probably did lose my period while on the pill, but obviously the pill does mask everything that's going on. So I wasn't really aware of it, but I most likely did lose it back when I was on the pill. So the first thing I wanna dive into is healthy fats. So I started to increase my healthy fats, which looked like increasing avocados, olive oil, not being too scared of that. Um, eggs as well and also I love peanut butter like peanut butter is my absolute favorite thing but I was limiting myself to like one tablespoon a day um, and now I just was going in I was having so many tablespoons of peanut butter a day and I still do now because I if I want it then I don't stop myself anymore um, so that definitely changed healthy fats are like the building blocks of our hormones so that's why it's really important as well to make sure we are getting enough of those within this hypothalamic amenorrhea space you probably hear to either stop exercising or reduce exercising this is due to the cortisol the circulating cortisol that is released when we do exercise which on top of us trying to get our periods back isn't that useful so for me i reduced my exercise load from about four times a week doing weight training to around about two times a week and then I wasn't seeing any results i.e. I wasn't getting my period back so I then reduced it completely cut it all out and just did yoga and walking and I did this for quite a lot of months um, so really cutting that exercise back and really giving my body a chance to heal Another big thing for me is that I started to prioritise self-care and made stress management something that I was much more aware of and diving into that. So cortisol can obviously mess up with our sex hormones. It interferes with FSH and LH and then ultimately estrogen and progesterone. Cortisol can actually bind to our progesterone receptors, meaning that our own progesterone can't actually get into its own molecules. So it can interfere with us in that respect as well. For me, I was kind of a stress head. I still have aspects of that as well as part of my kind of type A personality, like things to be organized and like things to be done really. But I had to prioritize it. This for me looked like meditation. So incorporating meditations as much as I could, mainly daily if I could. And I was really trying to up my breath work and getting into breath work, which I do speak about quite a bit on this channel because I facilitate breath work and I incorporate it within my one on one practice my coaching practice and also I do one-off breathwork sessions as well I think it's really important because breathwork gives us a sense of stress relief and really gets us to tune in to ourself and connect to ourself and also um, it can unlock some thoughts in our subconscious I was also including yoga every single morning as well to help another in another way to connect to my breath to slow down um, and just really help with my adrenals I do think that stress is often overlooked with period recovery. So you're always hearing on Instagram or wherever that um, you need to eat more and you need to exercise less or rest more, which is completely true and absolutely fine. But also stress is a major factor. So you can be doing all of that, but you could be a stress head and always always stress your body is literally never in the rest and digest mode and that will totally mess your hormones up and play around with them because your body still doesn't feel safe even though it's got the food even though it's got the rest and this is why I say that breath work was so key um, and such a missing piece towards the end of my recovery that I needed and as soon as I put that little piece of the puzzle in it clicked for me and I got my period back and I've also since getting my period back noticed that if I do have a particularly stressful time or I am exercising a little bit too much right now I'm still quite sensitive and my ovulation can run away from me um, so definitely stress is such a big big part. Part of my journey was also to challenge those food fears, those rules, those habits, those restrictive behaviours that I had. Some of them I didn't even really know about, wasn't really aware of until my coach brought them to light. But little things like I wouldn't let myself eat in the evening, maybe past eight or nine o'clock, I wouldn't really eat. 
and I wouldn't allow myself to eat two types of bread things in the day. So say I ha- if I had a sandwich at lunch, I wouldn't then go home and have a wrap or I wouldn't go and have fajitas, let's say, anything that's kind of bread-like texture, I wouldn't then have again. I would save eating what I would call a junk food till the weekend. So I would allow myself those crisps, those biscuits, etc. all at the weekend. And when I did, I usually would eat quite a lot. Like say I bought a pack of biscuits, I would eat most of that pack in one go. I also found that at the weekend, because I was then telling myself, oh, it's the weekend, I can eat what I want. I was literally kind of binging as well because I was obviously restricting myself through the week therefore I was binging at the weekend. During my period recovery journey, I was allowing myself to eat whatever I wanted. So that could be late at night, it could be as soon as I've eaten something, eating something again with no guilt. I did find that once I hired my coach, this was all a lot easier to kind of push those boundaries and step out of that comfort zone. So that is also why I think having a coach is really important. So just going off of that eating whatever I wanted without guilt aspect, that meant I was honouring my mental hunger cues whenever they was. So if I fancied a bit of food, um, any thoughts about food came to my mind, I would just not think twice and I would just eat. Getting support is really key as well. So this can be from your friends, from your boyfriend, from your family, from like an online community or a professional, a coach, nutritionist, whatever. It's really important to get some extra support. So like I've said before, I hired a coach and I think it was vital for my recovery and definitely sped it up. And I obviously help people get their periods back now as well. And I just had a lot of support with my friends. I just outright told a lot of my friends. They knew exactly what I was doing. My boyfriend was really supportive, encouraging with the weight gain as well. He was very encouraging with that. So it was really important to have people on your side that understand as well. It can feel quite lonely, especially when you're looking around, other people are trying to lose weight or they're really into fitness or trying to get their summer bodies or whatever. So it can feel really lonely that you're on this path of like the opposite journey. Fill in your feed, your Instagram feed, your Facebook feed, whatever you're looking at and consuming, making sure that it's positive. So maybe that means you're muting or you're removing fitness accounts or people from your gym that are always talking about their gym sessions. Just really making sure and being aware and mindful of who you're following, what message that they're bringing and how it makes you feel after you've seen that. It was actually one of the reasons why I started my own Instagram account, my kind of separate account that's my business account now, is because I wanted to shut off all the noise of all these fitness accounts and maybe of my friends. I just wanted to literally concentrate on just getting healed, getting better and all the people in that kind of space. I also ditched calorie counting, so I was calorie counting Monday to Friday or Monday to Thursday and kind of letting myself go at the weekends, i.e. binge. Um, So I completely ditched that, just following my, honouring my body cues and yeah, my coach also was counting my calories to see if I was on target and I also do that for my clients to make sure that they're on target and they don't have to get flustered about what how many calories they're eating and macros, etc. I do that all for them. Going through the HA recovery process can take time. So there's definitely a lot of patience and trust. So coming back and reminding yourself, why are you doing this? Why is it important? Why are periods important? And just making sure that you've got that support and you know where you're going and you just keep on going basically. I hope this has helped you. And if you've got any comments, please drop them down below or follow me over on Instagram and give me a DM. I would love, love, love to connect over there. So my Instagram is at whole.heartily.tash and I'll see you in the next video. Hello.